Hi everyone and welcome to this new episode of Phil's Innovation Shuttle. Once again from the center of technology and innovation, Silicon Valley. And today I have a very close friend as a guest um, who is the co-founder of CarpMe. So today everything will be around software and sustainability. And um, who is currently in Silicon Valley for uh, the new cohort of the German Accelerator. So if you're interested in sustainability, and software as a service businesses and want to learn something be ready for this episode have fun uh welcome robin good to have you here in silicon valley yeah thanks for having me Philip. Yeah. awesome um i just told everyone a little bit about who you are um but for a start it would be amazing if you could introduce yourself and of course tell us a little bit about um carb me and what you guys are trying to to achieve yeah of course thank you for that maybe for everyone who doesn't know that i know philip from siemens oh yeah which was also um the first professional experience i had in my career so working in a big corporate in the, in the manufacturing space and at the moment um, i'm co-founder of carbme and carbme is a cloud-based software platform that helps yeah manufacturing companies oh this is very fast <laughs> that helps manufacturing companies to understand their path to net zero in days not years which means in the end we help big companies to achieve yeah their climate their climate targets and nice. reduce their carbon footprint nice um a quick side note on that uh i actually just did a research with a with a friend and colleague and there's actually a huge amount of venture capital funding that went into Siemens alumni. So looks like this is a good first professional step that you went for uh, being an entrepreneur after that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the bigger the advantages are, and uh, I fully agree with my co-founder question. If you start enterprise an enterprise software company and you haven't worked in a big corporate, it's yeah. really hard for you yeah. at first to understand what kind of software you want to build since yeah. they have many different softwares, ERP systems, manufacturing software, CAD systems, and also how a big corporate works, right? Yeah. So for instance, in our in our category, there are so many people involved which engage with the product. So yeah. they are product designers, procurement people, LCA specialists, and I'm pretty sure you can learn all of this also if you're external, yeah. but it's much easier if you have seen this on your own. I think you can pretty much accelerate your speed to understand your clients if you have been in the same situation. 100%. Yeah, cool. So sustainability is one of the core buzzwords these days. Mm -hmm. um, and you try to help achieve those corporates who are obviously all talking about sustainability, mm -hmm. reach their carbon goals. What are like your success stories at this point um, and at which stage does your company stand? Mm -hmm. I mean, taking into account that we are operating or we have been operating for like 50 months right now. Yeah. And also taking into account that usually a sales cycle is 9 to 12 months. Yep. Um, we have at the moment yeah, a few dozen of enterprise customers. Strong. And maybe to mention a few of the most well-known brands I'm allowed to talk about, yeah, because it's also difficult to get the approval to yeah. talk about what you have been doing with them. Yeah. So, for instance, we work together with um, Infineon or Kercher, mm -hmm. which are very big um, companies in Germany. Yeah. And what we did for them is, in the end, so based on the ERP data, mm -hmm. um, we built automated LCA models of their products and of their supply chains. Mm -hmm. And with this granularity, we help them really to understand or to unlock reduction potential in their products, right? So assuming, assume, assuming, and this is an anonymized example, but assuming you have a product which consists of different materials, yeah. has several production steps, and you buy or you use energy in specific production sites, yeah. you have many different levers you could use, and we help them um, to prioritize the levers and also to understand the cost impacts, because, um, I mean, of course, you could also, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not a real solution to reduce emissions, but you could buy, let's say, offsetting credits for yeah. 100 euros per ton. Yeah. But maybe for two euros, you can negotiate with with, their, with your supplier that they use um, green energy in their production site, right? Yes. And you need to understand this. And we, in the end, help them to, to build business cases around decarbonization, yeah. um, that it's more, yeah. So how, how to say that? That it's much easier for them to understand it because not everyone um, is an, uh, has a PhD in environmental science and really knows Almost what's nobody, going, to be honest. What's going on, yeah. I think it's a, it's a big black box. Um, I know that when we when we met last time in Berlin, 
your approach is a pure software approach, right? Mm -hmm. But I assume there's also a lot of consulting happening, of educating course. your clients at this point, right? Of course. I mean, um, I tend to compare this with, let's say, process mining or RPA. Mm -hmm. So also companies like Celonis, which are obviously very successful, when they work with clients, they usually yeah, have a dual approach, yeah? yeah, offering the software and then having a consultancy or a partner on top, yes. which utilizes the data yes. and says, for instance, hey, look, so in our case, so we also cooperate with EY as an example. Yeah. And for instance, we analyze for the consultants the footprints, right? Yeah. And on top of this, they build roadmaps, they build strategies, and they yeah. also make very clear action points to nice. the corporates. And um, I always think that complex topics require different kind of solutions. And yeah. this can either be a software or yeah. a consultancy service on top. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, another big example for that, I think, is SAP. Right? Yeah. It's, a, it's an entire ecosystem around the software, including the entire consulting piece around it. Yeah, but I mean, SAP is also a very complex thing. Yes. Even something which is not that complex, like Salesforce. Yes. <laughs> they also have an ecosystem of consultants doing yes. the implementations or maybe customizing data fields in the product. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think as long as you don't have a very easy product like Slack, yeah, where you just enter messages, yes. um, as com as more complexity you have, the more yeah need of additional services is required. Yeah. Yeah. So when when did you discover that the software alone? will not get your clients to where you want them to be because obviously you're trying to solve a problem for them mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah when, when did you discover that you have to have a little bit more around your business model than just the software mm, I think this was very clear from the beginning on okay the question was more like just assuming you have a vision and you can build with a very strong engineering team the best product in the world yeah yeah so we thought about where would be the limitations of engineering science? Yeah. Even with uh, 500 engineers working five years on that, where would be the limitations? And yeah. We were very clear about this from the beginning on. Yeah. And we said, hey, look, even if we have the best software in the world, <laughs> still this kind of consultant. And I'll give you an example. So if you want to build processes around software, so yeah. let's say you have SAP and they have processes for procurement, right? Yeah. This is a consultancy effort. And if you want to implement a process to reduce emissions, yeah. there's also a consultant that creates a process, explains this, is doing the change management, is yeah. doing the rollout. And yeah. for us, it was clear from day one. The question was more like, yeah, where are the overlaps? And what can be automated and what cannot be automated? Yeah, awesome. So we already went pretty deep into your product. Um, the other question I have for you is, uh, why are you in Silicon Valley this week? What oh, are you doing here? Of course, for several reasons, and I'm not allowed to talk about all reasons. Oh. Um, but uh, the reason I'm one, allowed... One, one is me, obviously. <laughs> one, one, one reason is you, right? Um, I mean, we participated um, in the German Accelerator program. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know this, this is basically a program funded by the German government which helps startups in different stages, I assume from C to Series B, something in between, yeah. to enter the um, yeah, American market. So they provide you with mentors, um, they provide you with workshops, they help you to create an entity and stuff like that. Yeah. And this program started three months ago um, mm -hmm. On the in East New York. Coast, yeah, right? exactly, yeah. New York. Yeah. And yesterday we had um, in the SAP HANA house, so we were talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had just a final pitch and in the end, the official um, kind of, yeah, what's the right word for it? The official finish, finish of the program. Yeah. And now we got a certificate and we successfully were part of it, right? Nice. I hope it accelerated your visibility, client footprint, all of that. Um, of course, because the main reason why we also did this is, I think, if you want to enter a new market, yeah. even in words of Zoom, yeah. You need to smell the people and you Absolutely. need to talk to them. And Absolutely. you could have 100 calls with um, executives of, of US companies, but yeah. if you didn't talk to them in person, it's quite difficult to yeah. understand the challenges. Yes, and I mean, talking about uh, Silicon Valley, it is about being here in person. Yeah. I recently moved here and I realized the difference then. Like, if you have a call with somebody from Silicon Valley over Zoom and it's like an hour thing of their day, time shift of like nine hours mm -hmm. it's just different of the year yeah Absolutely. i mean i mean to be honest um i'm here for the second time for yeah. now 
I feel very energized. Yeah, of course. So the weather, people yeah. are nice, food is nice. I can we do a lot we can, of. We can work on your yeah, tan. Yeah, I can do a lot of sports. So I'm very, very wild because <laughs> I'm always in the office. And but on the other side, I mean, you wake up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. still jet lagged, yeah. and your colleagues already work for a few yes. hours. So you're always behind. So there are 50 to 100 emails or Slack messages you have to answer, and you're still in the bed. Yeah. You didn't have a coffee yet. You didn't have yeah. a tooth, toothpaste or whatever you need. Yeah. And um, it's really a different kind of work because you need to Definitely. apply to the different to different time zones. Definitely, zone. that was a huge change for me too. Um, so, at which stage do you stand now with with Carmi? What are the next steps? I would say in the next, yeah, ten to twelve months. Mm -hmm. So I think several steps. I mean, what I said, we have been operating for fifty months right now, yeah, and we scaled the company, yeah, to more than fifty people for now. Yeah. Strong. Um, I think we have the same um, growth objective also for the next year, so doubling down on headcount yeah. and also yeah, expanding our, let's say not our own carbon footprint, but our global customer footprint. Yeah. Um, since also we entered the US market, what I have mentioned, there are yeah. also some some customers we got which are not in, 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 in the Dach region, so yeah. they are in other parts of Europe. Yeah. And yeah, engaging with them, um, so expanding them and also educating them. Full speed them. into growth. Yeah, um, of course. Following your mission. Yeah, in the end following our mission and making also everything clear because coming back to enterprise software, so much domain knowledge is required in every part of your business, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, um, in, it doesn't matter if you do sales, marketing, product, engineering, customer success, or if you're one of the founders, yeah. you can learn so much about this because the market is changing, there are new regulations, yeah. and it's also a very yeah, big um, task of us founders to, to spread the knowledge in the company Absolutely. and become yeah not only a category leader but also a thought leader in yeah. the space um, because what you said uh, consultants and customers are also on the way to learn what, what is really required to, to foster change. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Final question. Um, we were both at Siemens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still in the ecosystem and I'm enjoying it. You pretty much started that company right out of university. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know that a lot of young professionals, young people who might be somewhere between consulting, or corporate career, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, um, what would be your recommendation? Like, how did you end up in that position? Um, and uh, yeah. what would you recommend somebody who's in the middle of joining a startup, starting an own company or going for a corporate career? Yeah. What's your thought on it? Um, yeah. Do I have two minutes to answer this question because you said it's the final question? Yes. I tried to do it. So, I mean... You can also answer in five seconds if you can. No, I can't. So, I came really to being an entrepreneur coincidentally. So, I remember the day I had a colleague, um, Philip, who was also a co-founder of my first company. And he just said, Robin, there is a hackathon. And it, it, had, it had nothing to do with Siemens. He just said, yeah. hey, let's... Let's visit. It, was, it was from university, right? Yeah, from Google, Google. from Google yeah. and Univ. And he just said, "Let's, let's try to apply." Yeah. And I told Philip, "Wow, I have really no clue about this." Yeah. And I was not so convinced in the beginning. He said, "Let's yeah. do it." Yeah. Yeah. And then we, uh, yeah, we participated. Yeah. And I think I can't remember. And we we won the first or the second the second um, yeah trophy in the end. Yeah. And this was when I realized. Um, in Germany, we would say everyone is cooking with water, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and I just said, okay, let's do it. And I got so hooked from yeah. that experience that yeah. I just said, let's try everything out. And of course, in my first company, um, which got acquired by Ecovadis, by the way, mm -hmm. um, we did so many mistakes I would never do again. Mm -hmm. And I'm still doing so many mistakes today. But I think it's like a muzzle. Yeah, if you don't train your biceps, yeah. it can it can't grow. And good example. So the recommendation is. I don't know if you guys want to join investment banking, consultancy, a corporate or a startup, but if you think being an entrepreneur is interesting for you, really just do it because you cannot learn this in university. Um, of course, you can get advice from more experienced people, yeah. but just do it. And I came into this topic coincidentally yeah. and I cannot imagine at this point to do something else again, to be honest. <laughs> Love it, Robin. You are a role model for me with that. Um, I was part of that journey when we both lived in Berlin and were hanging out almost every week. So um, I wish you all the best. I hope I can one day tag this post somewhere and said, now unicorn founder or something like that. Um, 
but yeah thank you for joining thanks for and uh, i would say we can have a good session of sports now and enjoy you enjoy the rest of your week in, in silicon valley thank you so much Philip. thanks for having me